Hello everyone, welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. industry where and how these valves are used also in our household for which purpose is which valve used uh, we are going to talk about that and what are the specifications of all the valves uh, like what are the advantages what are the disadvantages now this topic is very very important because everywhere now and then in your household or in the industry there is always a piping and whenever there is a piping there are control valves so you need to know about those valves but this topic is not being much focused upon in our um, curriculum or not being much asked upon in the interview as well but whenever you go to the industry you are going to be asked upon that which valve to be used in which line so it's very important to know about the types of valves that are used in the industry and where and how they are used now uh, coming straight away to the topic uh, so coming to the first type of valve i have jotted down all the advantages and disadvantages and at the top i have jotted down the applications of all the valves where and how they are used uh, at the end of the uh, video, I am going to draw each of the valves. Since there was no space here, I couldn't draw the uh, valves here. But I am going to draw the structure. I am going to explain the working principle of the same. First, let us uh, realize what are these type of valves and where and how they are used. And what are the advantages and disadvantages. So, coming straight away to gate valve. Gate valve is basically a valve that is used for open or closed purposes. So, the application straight away is a high temperature or pressure application and an on and off type valve. So, uh, the, talking about the structure of a gate valve, the, the gate valve is something like this, that th if this is my line of flow, there is a gate like structure and this comes down on and goes up. Now, this gate valve is basically used for isolation purposes, that is to either close off the flow or to open the flow completely. Uh, for uh, shut off, shutting of the flow or to uh, or it is completely open so it is not usually used to control the flow the primary reason for that the gate valve the structure it has is easily corrodible or easily uh, suffers leakage as um, if we use it for uh, controlling the flow even if we do not use it for controlling the flow it is typically uh, subjected to a lot of leakage gate valves so it is primarily used for open and closed purposes only because the gate if we half open it the fluid will flow through the gate and will corrode the ceiling over the gate and will corrode the entire system so basically we do not use gate valves for controlling the flow we basically use gate valve as open or close so remember this when you need to close it completely or open it completely you can use gate valves so it is for isolation for start or stop starting or stopping the flow uh, gate valve typically uh, why is it used because through a gate valve uh, when it is completely open, the frictional losses are very very less. That is KCVP square by 2 which know this is the uh, frictional loss that is the form friction loss whenever uh, a fluid passes through a valve. So that KC is very less for a gate valve. So the uh, delta HF or the HF that is the frictional uh, loss through a gate valve is low and thereafter the pressure drop is also low. So entirely there is an energy saving in a gate valve because the energy of the flow doesn't get lost when it faces a gate valve when it's part so the energy saving is low uh, low cost um, gate valves are very very cheap as it is an open and closed simple application so it's a low cost thing but now coming to the disadvantages of the gate valve the major disadvantage is though it is used for high temperature or pressure applications if there are a lot of irregular fluctuations in the high temperature that is being used that is the valve is subjected to a too much fluctuation in the high temperature of the fluid then there the valve is prone to leakages that is the ceiling of the valve can leak and the fluid can go out of that ceiling so random fluctuations in temperature is not allowed not allowed or it's a disadvantage in a gate valve the repair system for gate valve is complicated though the operating is easy that is you open or close the gate valve completely but the repair is a complex that is the maintenance of a gate valve is a complex structure moreover whenever there is a, a 
open to flow, that is the gate valve is completely open, there is a debris buildup, that is if, the sol if some amount of solid is coming along with the flow, it builds up around the ceiling of the gate valve and it basically, it basically decreases the life of the gate valve. So gate valve is prone to leakages of the ceiling uh, due to the debris buildup of the fluid that is incoming. So the repair is complex and prone to leakages and it is not quick. Gate valve is a difficult valve to open and close. That is, it takes time to open or close a gate valve completely. Basically, gate valve is used for high temperature and pressure and on and off. That is isolation purposes. That is when you need to close the flow completely for some repair or some maintenance work and need to close the pipe flow. There you can use the gate valve. Now coming to the most common valve that is used in our home and in the industry, that is the globe valve, the valve that is fitted in your tap or something like that. Globe valve is an easy operating, easy maintenance, quick running valve which can be used to control the flow readily. Mainly globe valve finds its use in the industry as a throttling valve. Remember uh, guys that Whenever you talk of a throttling valve, we are talking of a globe valve and not any other type of valve. Because when we are going to see the structure of the globe valve, it is something like this. This and this. And the globe valve has a plug and it can switch on and off the flow. And there is a pressure loss that occurs. Basically the throttling process as it says that a fluid coming at high pressure is throttled to a low pressure by making it undergo frictional losses through the valve. By making it pass through turbulence and eddies, eddy formations, eddy current formations happen and the fluid loses the amount of pressure that it was initially building up and it comes out at a lower pressure. Uh, so that is the throttling purpose and globe valves are used for the throttling purpose. It is a structure which provokes throttling which um, and the fluid undergoes throttling whenever it passes through a globe valve. So if you are using it as a throttling valve, you have to use globe valve. Moreover, it is at high temperature. Uh, and it is used for flow control. So you can decrease or increase the flow. Generally, generally, uh, globe valves are not used as shutoff valves, but one uh, type of globe valve, that is the solenoid valve, can be used as a completely shutoff valve. Uh, as we have already mentioned, the delta P, that is the pressure drop across a globe valve is high. So if you do not want the energy of the fluid to be lost, you can, you shouldn't go for globe valve. If you are wanting your pressure to drop, you should go for globe valve. But if you do not want a high pressure loss, globe valve is a no-no. If you only want to control the flow and you do not want to tamper the pressure, globe valve is a no-no. Uh, most, moreover, the closing is difficult. The closing of a globe valve is a difficult job. Uh, easy maintenance, as I have already mentioned, particularly at high pressure. At high pressure, the closing of a globe valve becomes a difficult purpose because the pressure is coming with a lot of energy and the globe valve is difficult to close at high pressure. And the globe valve is prone to leakages as the ceiling suffers a lot of eddies and a lot of turbulences which can undergo corrosion and eventually damage. Uh, so it is used as a throttling valve, as I have already mentioned. Now coming to another common type of valve, that is a ball valve. Now ball valve is a must whenever uh, you need to stop leakages. Like you cannot have leakages of oil in an industry particularly. So in the oil industry, in the oil or refineries, oil refinery industry particularly, this is a very useful, this ball valve is frequently used in the oil industry. Uh, particularly for a gas industry because gases are prone to leakages as they have a very very high viscosity, uh, very very low viscosity uh, rather uh, they want to fly away through the leakages or the gaps wherever they get one. Uh, so the gas handling particularly ball valves are a must because ball valves provide for a very very tight sealing. So the tight seal is a very very good advantage of a ball valve. Moreover it is durable. It it undergoes like we have seen in the industry 40 years, 50 years of ball valve survives. So ball valve is for long time applications, it's for tight sealing applications. Ball valve doesn't support throttling, that is no throttling occurs in a ball valve. So you, if you want to decrease the pressure, you cannot go for ball valve because ball valve doesn't provide that turbulence or the eddies formation which will decrease the pressure. So no throttling in a ball valve. It is quick in operation. Ball valve is very quick in operation. Ball valve has no leakages. Very important, no leakages, tight seam. Ball valve has no leakages. We will go to the structure of the ball valve, why it has no leakages. 
it is the most cost effective valve among all the valve it is easier to buy a valve valve and to maintain a valve valve as it is very very daily durable easy operation and repair of a valve valve easy operation and repair and gas handling because it is a acting as a sealant it can be used at fluctuating temperatures it has a unique property of handling corrosive fluids it can be used in shut off complete shut off and complete open so ball valve is one of the most frequently used valve and it mostly has advantages it has very few disadvantages if you talk about like throttling is one of the disadvantages it cannot undergo throttling now coming to check valves check valves is the other ones which are not being looked upon or not being used to control flow that much like you don't talk about check valves but it is the most important valve in the industry because it prevents the backflow of the fluid yes very very important check valves are used to check the flow check the black flow of the fluid so whenever you need to prevent the backflow of the fluid you need to use a check valve it is a non returning valve nrv that is whenever there is a positive flow it is open whenever this flow stops that is a negative pressure is developing that is the flow the fluid is trying to come back it closes the gate and it stops uh, fluid from coming back we are going to go to the structure and the details it protects the pump pump protection preventing the back flow it is used in the backup valve that is whenever your all valve fails you uh, provide a check valve so that there is a prevention of backflow no use in pulsating system very very important if your system is pulsating that is it is producing flow or sometimes it is stagnant then it is again producing flow if it is sometimes stagnant then it is again producing flow like for a positive displacement pump if you use one positive displacement pump and not multiple in uh, series or parallel operating so there is going to be a pulsating flow like positive displacement pump gives a flow at once and then stops there is a zero flow then gives the flow again that is not going to be a case with check valve the check valve is going to straight away anticipate that no flow is coming from there i am going to close so it's going to it's going to close the valve so for pulsating system it is not recommended because then opening and closing of the valve will keep on happening throughout uh, so for pulsating system check valve is a no no uh, now coming to the last type of valve now talking about check valves also one more feature of check valve is it can be used as a relief valve as well that is whenever the pressure is developing too much beyond the certain limit check valve allows the flow and then when the pressure is again maintained by allowing some fluid to flow away then it again closes off just like and it doesn't let the fluid to return back to the flow that has exited out so check valve can be used as a relief valve as well so it is a relief valve as well check valve is a relief valve as well now coming to the last type of valve that is commonly used in the industry is a butterfly valve butterfly valve is generally a very important valve for handling a large amount of flow that is a large quantity a large quantity of flow uh butterfly valve are generally used in the pharmaceutical industry the fmcg industry the chemical industry where the flow is continuous and you need to handle a large amount of flow uh, fast moving consumer goods fmcg industry you are understanding how much is the demand and what a speedy operation do you need butterfly flow uh, has a great great accuracy because in pharmaceutical industry the composition of the chemicals or in the chemical industry it is very important to maintain the accuracy of the compositions you need to have a butterfly valve butterfly valve maintains the composition of the fluid uh, properly by allowing a certain fluid to flow only up to a certain extent it can be pneumatically controlled manually controlled and electronically controlled the butterfly valve so its accuracy is very good it can be controlled in all three ways it is easy installation in a running pipeline you can install a butterfly uh, valve and easy removal you can remove the butterfly valve in an online running pipeline uh, but a disadvantage of butterfly valve is this it is prone to leakages it is prone to leakages because it doesn't allow tight shut off it doesn't allow complete open circuit there is always some part of the disc will be providing hindrance to the flow of the uh, fluid and always uh, some part of the disc will be open to leakages whenever you are shutting the entire system off now since we have gone through all the valves uh, disadvantages and advantages now come to the structure to better understand the valve and why they are called so like if we go through the structures you will understand why these valves are as they are functioning now talking about this gate valve 
as I have already explained, it is for isolation purpose only, it is for open and closed uh, circuit operation. So now, coming to the gate valve, what it has is, it has a handle and it has this gate and this is supposedly my fluid flowing into the pipe, this is my outlet. So what happens is, whenever I need to open it, I will pull out the gate, this is my gate. And whenever I need to close the flow, I will put this down. Complete shut off. The flow is blocked here. No flow is occurring here. Shut off. Now, if you keep it in the middle, supposedly, you have kept the gate half open. So what happens is, the flow keeps on occurring and this ceiling, this ceiling, basically this entire gate suffers corrosion due to the incoming fluid. It is continuously suffering heavy pressure and at some point of time the ceiling is going to leak. The ceiling will suffer leakage. This gate will suffer leakage. So this is never used for flow control. It is either used for completely shutting it off or completely open system. So isolation. So gate valve down. Now coming to globe valve. Globe valve. Uh, so the structure of the globe valve as the name suggests it's a disc like structure. So supposedly this is my plug. It's a plug like structure. This is my plug. And this is somewhat like this. So what happens is the fluid comes from here. This is my pipeline. It changes the direction. The plug can be put in or can be put out. Controlling the direction and the amount of fluid flow. So what's happening is it is striking multiple surfaces and forming eddies in the system. These are the eddies. So the pressure drop across this valve system, that is the throttling, that is the two provisions kept to throttle the fluid flow actually decreases the pressure because there is a high pressure drop due to eddy formation and due to frictional loss due to this throttling action. Moreover, this plug can be adjusted in such a way up and down to control the amount of throttling or the amount of flow or the amount of pressure drop that you need. So the plug, this is the plug, can be put up and down according to the need of the flow. Flow control and increase or decrease and pressure control, pressure decrease, how much do you need the throttling. So this is the most common type of valve in our house as well as in the industry, the throttling valve. So uh, talking about the solenoid control, solenoid control is, this is connected to a voltage source. As soon as the voltage source is off, the plug comes and fits in this gap. So what happens is, this is supposedly my throttle action. This is my plug. Whenever this voltage goes off, this just comes and fits in to this. So this is complete shut off. So this doesn't let the liquid flow. It's complete shut off. So this is how a globe valve, this is how a solenoid, solenoid globe valve operates. Solenoid valve, also known as a solenoid valve, operates on voltage. Whenever the voltage is zero, it will completely shut it off. Moreover, you are seeing that this fluid is flowing into multiple areas of the plug and the sealing disc. That is, it has multiple entries, it can attack the ceiling disc and therefore the ceiling is again prone to leakages. Again prone to leakages because it faces the fluid from multiple directions. If it is a corrosive fluid, it is prone to leakages. Now coming to the ball valve. Now as the name suggests, once again, it is a type of ball. Uh, so this is the kind of a structure that a ball valve has. I'm showing it like this is the pipeline. The flow is occurring from outside the board to inside the board. So what happens is a ball is there which has a diameter same as the diameter of the pipe. The fluid comes in, the fluid goes out. Now whenever I need to shut off the valve, what happens is the ball has a structure like this. This is my ball. Supposedly this is my flow occurring. What I do is this surface is completely solid so I turn this ball towards the pipe so what happens is the solid surface now closes this tightly seals and closes the entry of the fluid so this is the kind of a structure it follows 
So now the fluid cannot flow because the solid surface has now come here and has blocked the flow. It's a completely sealing device because it's a ball-like structure where one end is opening and another end is solid. Just like this. This is my pipeline. This is my ball. The fluid is happening. Whenever I need to close this, this is it. Now it faces the solid surface. It doesn't flow. This is my ball valve. Not flow to liquid is completely shut off. Used in oil industry. Used in refineries. Now the check valve. Check valve, what does it happen? Supposedly, this is a spring-like structure. This is a spring-like structure. And this is my plug. So what happens is whenever there is a flow through the pipe, whenever there is a flow through the pipe, the plug is getting compressed against the spring and it becomes something like this and the fluid is able to pass. Supposedly this is my structure at full flow. So the fluid is able to pass. Now whenever this flow stops, this flow stops, this fluid tries to come back. There is a back pressure developed. What happens is, this spring expands because there is no pressure from this end. There is no flow from this end. And it fits against the wall closing the structure and not letting any fluid flow from back end to front end. So it is compressed when this flow is coming in and it is closed when the back flow is trying to happen. This is the function of a check valve. And a relief valve is whenever the pressure is developed, obviously this is in the closed condition, whenever the pressure is high, what happens is this opens up and this allows some fluid to flow out. As soon as the pressure is again balanced, it again closes off. This is the structure for relief. Check valve also used as a relief valve whenever the pressure is very high. Now coming to the last type of valve, it looks similar to a ball valve, that is, if you see this is the pipe, this is the opening to the pipe, it has a disc like structure that fits into the pipe and that can be rotated. So whenever I want to open it, suppose if this is my pipe, this is my disc, and this disc can be rotated like this, so what happens in a closed condition? This remains like this. In my open condition, whenever this handle is turned off, in my open condition, it is something like this. A disc. It is open. The fluid can pass easily. Here there is no passage. Here there is no passage. Here, across the disc, like if this is my opening. This is my disc at closed condition, this is my disc at open condition, so the fluid can pass from sidewise and can go. So always there is some entrance, even at the open condition there is a disc entrance and at the closed condition also there is no proper, not proper sealing, it can have leakages, so it is prone to leakages. It is particularly used to handle large amount of flows, that is pharmaceutical and FMCG industry, this is for the wastewater treatment particularly chip valves and finds a variety of applications as it is a, as it is a non returning valve. Ball valve particularly against corrosive fluids in the oil industry where you need completely sealing, throttling valve, globe valve and high temperature on and off application gate valve. So this is uh, the basic type of gloves that are common in the industry. This is how they work and this is their applications, their advantages and their disadvantages. If you like today's video, like our work, share it with your friends and thank you very much.